Welcome to our Sunday school service. Right, and uh, if you all um, haven't gotten your, your your quarterly yet, we have some up uh, up front here when you get a chance. And uh, before we uh, you know open up, with, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Uh, anyone have any uh, requests that they would like to uh, make known this morning? Teach Pastor Tim. I heard that uh, he asked you to teach him. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Okay, David. Uh, I have a test coming up to be a uh, appreciation prayer. Let's remember that. Let's remember that. All right, yeah, let's remember that too. Anybody else? All right, let's go ahead and uh, open here in a word of prayer. Lord, we uh, thank you for bringing us here together this morning. Uh, God, we ask that you would uh, you know, be with these uh, many prayer requests that have been made made here today. That uh, you know you you would be with our our members that are having you know, having these uh, tests done, and uh, you know the, those other requests for you know the man that was in the accident, Lord. And uh, we'd ask that you be with our uh, many unspoken requests as well as the many that are in the bulletin, Lord. God, we pray that uh, you, you would continue to be with us as we uh, weather through this uh, pandemic and the changes that are going through uh, because of that and our schools, Lord, and uh, you know, help us to uh, you know, prepare to you know, deal with, with that and work through that. And Lord, we ask that you would just continue to be with us and you know, allow us to draw closer to you and be closer in fellowship, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so... Uh, yeah, today we're we're switching over here and going into the New Testament. Uh, we'll be lo looking at First uh, John, and so uh, you know we have uh, you know John, our our apostle of love, and uh, on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, you know, the pastor was talking about uh, you know, our, our testimony, and so this uh, here is going to be you know John's uh, testimony of Jesus in this this letter. He's he's kind of. Uh, you know, not only that, but he also gives some uh, practical advice as well as, as we go through uh, as he goes through this and and talks about it. So this first part is going to be you know his these first opening verses will be you know his, his testimony of uh, you know of Christ. And so um, let's let's go ahead and. Uh, or before we get started, the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we'll, we'll we'll see a couple of these here today. Is that uh, you know, John mentions a couple of things that God is. Uh, he mentions that uh, God is light, uh, God is love, and God is life. And so, uh, you know, we'll see the the, you know, the light mentioned here through this. And and you know, as we go through this uh, this book, you know, we'll see the uh, other portions mentioned as well. So, all right, with, with that, let's uh, go ahead and get started with these uh, first uh, verses here. All right, and it says. Uh, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, uh, that which was from the beginning, uh, which we have heard, which we've seen through our eyes, uh, which we have looked upon, and our hands have beheld of the word of life. For the life was made manifested, uh, that we have seen it and bear witness, and show it unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Uh, which we have seen and heard and declared unto you that we may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so that's his, 
you know, his, 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 his testimony if you'll, uh, about Jesus. And if you'll notice, uh, he opens with uh, some, some wording that's uh, very similar to uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. You know, he, he mentions the word. You know, and in, 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 in the, the Gospel of John 1.1, 1, 1, it mentions that uh, uh, in the beginning was the word. Uh, the word was with God and the word was God. And so, you know, here he, he expounds that from just the word to the word of life. And then he uh, goes on and he talks about how, how it was uh, you know, manifested, you know, how you know, God's love and, you know, has been made uh, manifest. And you know, we can look over into uh, Hebrews and chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, you know, where, where it talks about uh, you know, it being made manifested, man manifested through his son. It says, uh, God, who was at sundry times, and in divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And so, you know, he's, he's pointing out and, and talking about, you know, Jesus here and, uh, you know, giving his... Uh, you know, giving his testimony that you know that he's he's seen Jesus that we can you know declare this this fellowship with uh, you know Father and and Son and, and Christ that you know he's he's looked upon it and you know w with with our hands have handled so you know during that during the resurrection when he's showing his scars you know they've that he's he's telling them that you know we've seen this you know we've we've touched the scars we've seen the proof All right, and we go on to uh, verse four. He's uh, communicating the, these, and he's, he's saying that these things write we unto you that your joy may be, may, may be full. So, you know, he, he's uh, you know, you know, mentioning these things and reminding them of this testimony that, you know, their, their joy will be made full, that, you know, their, their faith and, and uh, you know, their things of looking toward Christ will be made full and, and completely manifest, that remembering just how much you know, God loved us, that he gave his only son for our sins. And he goes on in verse 5, that uh, this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we, we lie and we walk in dark and, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not have the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And right, so, uh, you know, here, here he is talking about you know, God being light. And in order for us to uh, have fellowship with him, you, we can't walk in darkness. You know, we can't walk like the world does and, and be able to, uh, you know, to fellowship and, and, and talk with, with the Lord. And he, he points out that if we do that, then we, then we lie, that we don't have the truth. Because, you know, again, God is truth. And so if we don't have that that if we're not showing that truth and, and, and walking in the light, then we don't have any fellowship with God. You know, our, our walk is also our testimony. And so this gives us some practical things with that as well. And so let's go on to uh, uh, verse 8 here. And it says, uh, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we, are, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And so again, he's uh, you know, pointing out that if, we, that if you know, we're walking in darkness or we're, we're saying that you know, there's, there's no sin, uh, sin, then we're just lying to ourselves. And I mean, there, there's some reasons that we may you know, try to say that. That you know we're we're saying that well the, the you know this this little sin is is of no consequence you know it's just a little sin it's not going to hurt anybody uh, you know you're, or you maybe not be taking responsibility for your sins or you may be saying that uh, you know, it doesn't exist in you you know you're you don't believe that uh, that you sin any longer which we, we know we all know that's that's not true and that's why he's saying that the truth isn't in us. But, you know, if we uh, you know, realize that we are still sinners because we're still in the flesh and confess our sins, that, uh, you know, God will still will make sure that we're cleansed from all the uh, unrighteousness. And uh, you know, he'll, he'll make sure that we're, 
you know, taken unto him. So let's, uh, but you know, if we continue to say that we have not sinned, and if, if you notice, he, he repeats this a lot, that if we say that, that we haven't sinned or that, uh, or that we have no sin, that we're, we're making God a liar. And uh, or, or, so we, we want to make sure that you know, he's getting that point across with that repetition, that he's getting that point across with that repetition. We want to make sure that we're not doing those things. All right, so let's uh, go on to uh, chapter 2 here. It says, uh, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the preparation for our sins. Not our sins only, but also the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do... We do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, and, ver and verily is the love of God perfected, hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, Ought himself also walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write, in, write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which, it, which thing is true in him and you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and, ha and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. All right, so let's uh, go back and uh, look, look at a couple of things here. So uh, you notice that he you know, starts out with uh, you know, this general, my, my little children. John is older at, the, at this point in life, in life when he's uh, you know writing this, and so you know he's he's seeing himself as kind of a mentor, as he, as you know as a mentor as he's writing unto the uh, unto the people here, and he says, you know, my little children, these things I write not unto you that you sin not. So he's you know he's letting them know that you know he, it, I'm not writing this to you to, for you to be sinless, because uh, you know he he knows that you're not going to be completely without sin. I mean, you, you may sin less than you did before uh, you know, because you're trying to please God, but you're not completely sinless. And so that he, he reminds them that if, that, you know, when you stumble and fall, that we have an advocate. You know, we, we have someone that, uh, we, we have Jesus Christ, you know, the, someone who's, who's going to come there and, and advocate for us. You know, he's going to plead with the Father for us. And this uh, same word that uh, he uses here to... Uh, for advocate is uh, is also uh, translated in uh, John fourteen uh, sixteen as uh, comforter. Uh, so let me go back to the Gospel of John here and we'll go into uh, fourteen sixteen. It says, and I, and I pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. And so it's that that same word there. And then uh, we uh, look on here that, you know, this advocate with the Father is Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the preparation of our sins. And that uh, word there, that uh, appropriation, uh, you know, suggests that it's um, the uh, re removal uh, of, of our sins. You know, he's, he's, he's paid the price for us. You know, he's, you know, we're, we're guilty, you know, if we were to stand before God, but he, he, you know, he's going to come in there and he's going to say, it's okay, I've paid it. And so, uh, and not just our sins, but uh, he reminds us that it's the sins of, of the whole world. You know, anyone that's willing to accept Christ, he's, uh, he has paid for those sins for us. And then, you know, here, here we go with it, into this uh, next portion here where he's talking about, you know, our walk and how we should behave. And he, he reminds them that of keeping our, our commandments and or keeping his commandments. He says that, if we keep his commandments, that uh, he saith, I know him. Uh, but he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, 
is a liar and the truth is not in him. You know, again, we have that repetition. You know, we want to keep the commandments. And if you say that you, that you love God, but you don't keep his commandments, then, then you're a liar and there's no truth in you. But, you know, the, uh, the, the, the positive of that is that if you keep his commandments and you know, keep, his, keep, his, keep his word, uh, the, the love of God is perfected. It's, it's completed. You know, so uh, we're, we're able to show the world the love of God if we keep his commandments and keep doing the things that we're to do through our, through our testimony and our walk. We're able to, to, show, uh, to show, God, you know, that, uh, show God and what he's done for us. And it says in this last portion again, it's hereby know we that we are in him. And, you know, we have that, uh, yeah, that sounds very uh, Paul-like. Uh, you know, if we, if we go back and we can uh, look at some of the you know, same wordings that, uh, you know, Paul has used about, you know, being in, in, in Christ. Uh, let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and uh, 17. It says, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And then we see, we see that repeated several times throughout Paul's letters. Uh, we, uh, he also mentions that similar wording in uh, Galatians, in, in Galatians 3 and 27. It says, uh, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You know, again, being in, into Christ and, and putting on Christ and you know, putting on His uh, righteousness. And then, uh, you know, finally we have uh, uh, Philippians in uh, three nine. It said, uh, "And be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is." Of God by faith, you know. Again, being these things that are being found, you know, in in Him, in in Christ, that uh, has redeemed us. And we can look at uh, one more place in the in the Gospel of John, where uh, Jesus Himself uh, gives an example of that. So let's look at John uh, fifteen. And let's look at uh, verses uh, 4 through 7, where he's talking about being the uh, true vine. It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot not bear fruit of itself, except for it abide in the vine, and no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide, abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and withereth. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Because, you know, again, we're, we're on the, and, and with that, you know, we're looking at being in Christ and being on that same page, so to speak. You know, the things that, that we want will be the same things that Christ wants. And so... You know, so when we ask of, uh, of him, it's, it's going to be granted because it's of God's will. And then uh, we go on to verse 6, and it's, it's talking about, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, walking the same as, uh, you know, as, as Jesus walked. You know, having that same, desiring to have that same walk that, that Jesus did. And, uh, you know, he, re he reminds them, talks to them about that this is, this is no new commandment that... that uh, you know that ha that has been given, but an old commandment that they should have known from the beginning. You know this is the the whole you know loving your. He's reminding them about you know loving their neighbor. Uh, but you know again he says that this is a new commandment, which, which is true because the darkness has passed. So this is this is uh, you know new to them because the, you know they've been made new. You know the darkness has passed and now the true light of God shines for them. 
And then, you know, here, here we go talking about, you know, loving your neighbor, your brother. He gives the specific example. You know, he's the say that he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. So if you claim to be in the light, but, you know, you, you hate your, your, your fellow human, then, uh, then you're still in darkness. A bit, you know, the, the, but the opposite is true also, that if you love your brother, then you abideth in the light. You know, there, there's no occasion of stumbling. And, and uh, you know, walking in darkness, that's, that's very apt to happen. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get up a lot of times in the morning to, uh, to, to try to do a run, and sometimes I have to be careful how early that I start out or try to get up and when, where I'm running at, uh, because you can easily get somewhere where it's dark enough to where you can't see and you don't know what's, what's going on. And you can be, you know, out running, and then all of a sudden there's a, you know, a tree branch or a part in the road that's a little bit uh, higher, and you're going to trip and you're going to fall. And so if you, if you stay in the darkness, you know, you're going to be blinded by that and that you're going to, and you're going to trip and you're going to fall. And so, you know, he just reminds them to keep, you know, keep focused on that, keep focused on keeping the commandments and loving your neighbor so that you don't fall and your testimony uh, can, can show God. All right, so uh, let's go on to uh, chapter two and uh, we're going to look at... Uh, verses uh, 12 through uh, 17. And he says, uh, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked, the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And so, like we uh, note, I'll stop here just for a moment. We notice here that he he, he addresses you know three people here. He, like he, he says, you know, little children again. That just general. Um, you know, everyone that he's talking to. Then he talks specifically to the fathers. You know, the, the you know the elders. You know, those that. You know, have, have have been working in the faith for a while. You know, they, they, he's talking about then how they've they've known God from the beginning, and then you know the young men, the young Christian men. You know, he uh, it gives them encouragement that you know they're they're strong and they have abided in the Word of God, and so they've they've overcome the wicked one. You know, they've overcome the devil by by uh, staying in in the Word of God and and keeping strong. All right, so uh, you know, we and we we go on here into. Uh, Verse 15, and he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so, you know, we, we have here in that, that the word world is the same one that's also used in, you know, in uh, John 3.16. And so, you know, he, he's saying that, and so, you know, here you may have some people confused because, you know, that's that same word. And, he, you know, he says that God loved the world, but it's talking about, a, you know, a, a different love here. You know, he's talking about looking at the uh, lust of the flesh and the uh, lust of the eyes and the, and the pride of life, you know, being self-centered and, and, and looking at that, uh, you, know, you know, not that compassionate love that, that, uh, that God has given, you know, that, that compassionate, that merciful love that, that he's taken our sins upon himself you know, and, you know, died for us. But, you know, these things that he's talking about, you know, the, the, the lust, the pride, the, you know, that's of the world. And so it's, it's mutually exclusive. You know, you, you can't you know, have this pride and love of yourself and love of the world and the things that are in the world and love the Father at the same time. And so it's, it's one or the other. And, you know, he, he talks about just how temporal these things are. You know, the, the things of the world, they're going to pass away. They're, they're going to they're gonna rot. They're going to be moth-eaten. They're going to be destroyed. But, you know, if you abide in God's Word, then, uh, then you know, that will be eternal because, you know, God is eternal. You'll, you'll have your fellowship with God forever. And it goes on to... Uh, so we go on here into uh, verse uh, 18. 
It says, uh, little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is true the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of, of us. For if they had been of us, they, they would have no doubt continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written un unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and, and that there is no lie of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth Jesus Christ? He is an antichrist, he that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, but hath not the Father, but he also that acknowledgeth the Son, hath the Father also. Uh, let therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard uh, from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he have promised us, even eternal life. All right, and so uh, he, uh, you know, again, starts with, that, the, uh, starts with the little ch children, that, uh, that general speaking. And uh, he says that it is the last time. And the, and the reason that they know that it is the last time is he's talking about that there are people that are anti-Christ or against Christ. That there are, are many of them. That, that's how they know that it's the last time. You know, they, even in, you're here in the... Uh, in the post, in the uh, you know apostles' age, there were people that had left and started sh talking heresies and had had apostatized from the church already, and so uh, that's that's where he points out that you know they went out from us and uh, they were not of us, that, and you can tell that they were not of them because if they were, they would have they would have stayed with with them, and uh, he he gives them this. Uh, you know, reassurance here that you know, they have an unction from the Holy One and that they, they know these things. So he's letting them know that, you know, you, you know Christ, you know, you know God, you know, you, you know the Word and you know the, the uh, you know, teachings that, that we've given you and you know them to be true. And so uh, because of that, uh, you know the truth and you know what, what a lie is. Uh, you know, since you know the Word of God, you know what isn't the Word of God. And uh, you know, he, he points out that you know, he is, who, who is he, uh, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. And so you know, even then you had people that were, that were denying that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that he was the Messiah. And you know, he's letting them know that, it, that you know, if, you deny, if you deny him, you deny the, both the Father and Son. You know, if you deny the Son, then you don't have the Father. Uh, you know, but, but again... Uh, you know, we have this, uh, that the opposite being true, that if you acknowledge the Son, you, you, you acknowledge or know the Father also. And then uh, he reminds them that, that you've known this, you know, from the beginning. And if you keep these things, that you, you will continue in the Son and the Father also. And that if you continue in these things, you'll, you'll have the promise, you know, that promise that was given unto you of, of eternal life. And so let's go on to uh, verse uh, 26 here. It says, These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received, uh, which you have received of him abideth in you, and ye ne he need not that any man teach you, but as the same uh, anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. Even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, Abide in him that when he, when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at, at his coming. If you, if you know that he is, right, he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And so, you know, again, he, he talks about, and talks about the, the anointing, you know, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, being anointed by the Holy Spirit, you know, you've, you've received him, and, and you'll know this. You don't need any other, any other teachings. And, you know, even then you had you know, false teachers that would be like, well, you need this and, uh, you know, something else. You know, just like you have the, uh, you, you, the Mormon church, you know, they, they present the Bible, but they also say, well, and you have this Book of Mormon that has uh, extra stuff in it here. And, uh, you know, you've, all, all we need is right here in, in, in this Bible, in this book here. And uh, so, you know, receiving that Holy Spirit, we, we know that. 
and uh, you know we can be prepared and, and, and be ready for these things and be you know be confident and, and not ashamed of, of Christ you know even you know as we wait for his second coming All right and then uh, yeah. No, oh, well, that's uh, all. Sorry, I went ahead and, and uh, I had read on. So that's, you know, all that I, I have here today. You know, I hope that this, uh, you know, r- reminds us to, uh, you know, keep his commandments and, you know, reminds us that God is light and, and uh, that, you know, the things that, that, that he's done for us and that, you know, we can use this to, uh, you know, continue thinking about our, our, testi- our testimony and we can focus, you know, on, on that walk and we can use, uh, you know, that focus by, you know, keeping his commandments and, and uh, you know, showing our, our love for our, our uh, you know, brothers and sisters and, and uh, you'll be able to, you know, to fully show God. And, you know, at the, at the same time, you know, we can keep a lookout for, you know, those that you want to add on to the gospel, you know, you, this and so that, you know, we can be protected against that and continue to, you know, share our testimony and uh, of God's love and, and, and what he means to us. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and you know, close us here in a, in a word of prayer. Lord, we uh, thank you for this day. God, we thank you so much for all that, uh, that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for this uh, you know, beautiful word that uh, you've, you've allowed us to read here and, uh, and uh, you know, glean things from. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would uh, you know, be with us here as we go through our service, that you would guide us through this service, Lord. God, we ask that you would be with our pastor, and uh, we ask that you would be with our, uh, uh, those of the rest of us that are continuing to you know, finish up our lessons and uh, you know, continue to teach here this morning, that uh, you would just uh, you know, allow you to you know, pour out your spirit and be in the midst of us and you know, allow us to you know, keep talking about you and your word, Lord, and God, I ask that you would just uh, you know, be with uh, everyone throughout the rest of this uh, service. You be with our, you know, also our choir director, and uh, you, you'll be with those of us that are in the choir, Lord, as we you know, lift up our voices to praise you. Uh, God, we, we just have so much to thank you for, for, for what you've done for us, and I, I thank you that you've given us a chance to you know, read through these words that uh, you know, John had written so many years ago, and that it reminds us of what you've done for us. And God, I ask that you would uh, you know, allow us to uh, take this information that we've gleaned from this and use it for our walk and our testimony for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.